Welcome everyone to this introduction to your documentary unit, this next section of the EDUCAS Film Studies specification that you've been working through so far. This part of the course uh, is a shorter part of the course where we focus on one film, Stories We Tell by Sarah Polly. And within this unit we will look at the documentary itself and documentary form. And alongside those two aspects, the specification names filmmakers theories and the significance of digital technology as the specialist focus areas for this unit. So in the same way as the debates uh, form part of our study for the British Film Unit, for instance, where we consider a gendered perspective, for example, here it's filmmakers theories and the significance of digital technology. Just so we're clear about where this fits in your exams and in the specification, you sit two papers, remember, and the documentary section is section B of paper two. You will be assessed through a 20 mark question, so a 20 mark essay question, and you'll have half an hour to complete the essay, and you'll have a choice of two questions for this unit. As you know, there are a number of different approaches that you have to learn throughout the course of the um, throughout the course of your study as a whole, uh, and there are a number of specialist areas that are different for each unit. So, for documentary and documentary film, the, the central film that you're studying is Sarah Polly's story we tell. You'll examine the features of documentary, so we, you will need to do some learning of some new features that we're going to look at in this first introductory video. You have to cover a minimum of two filmmakers' theories, and we're going to look at the theories proposed by Kim Longinotto, Peter Watkins and Nick Broomfield. And you have to be able to also comment on the significance of digital technology. So, although that seems like quite a lot to cover, the questions are actually quite specific and narrow your focus down quite significantly. So it's going to be about developing a really precise and exacting approach to these films. But before we go any further, we're going to start off by defining what we mean by a documentary film. So I want you to do these activities yourself at home and really think through these activities carefully. So I want you to pause this video at certain specific points as you go along. So we're going to start off by trying to work through a definition of documentary. To begin with, I want you to list the documentaries that you've watched. So if I were sat at home, I've, for instance, recently watched a documentary on Netflix about Michael Jordan, which was a TV series of documentaries. It might be that you have watched recently uh, some BBC Natural World programming, the sort of thing narrated by David Attenborough. So I want you to list every single documentary that you've watched, say, in the last two years that you can remember. OK, with that done, note down next to them, where did you watch them? Have you seen any of these documentaries in the cinema? Have you seen any on TV? Or did you stream them? So note those down next to each of the documentaries that you've watched. And then I want you to think, why did you view those, these documentaries in these settings? So, for instance, I chose to watch the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix because it was convenient. I could watch as many or as few episodes as I wanted to. And I could choose to, through watching that series on Netflix, see the whole narrative of his career because that's a documentary that moves around and changes in time. Equally, I've also watched the documentary called The Act of Killing, which I would thoroughly recommend you watch as well. But I saw that in the cinema to begin with. And that's because it's a documentary of a much grander scale with really spectacular images. And I wanted to watch and experience that in the cinema so that it had the maximum possible impact. Conversely, a film that goes alongside that, The Sound of Silence, is a more traditional documentary, and I watched that on Blu-ray because I wanted the lushness of the detail, 
but equally it was a series of what are called talking heads, people talking on screen. It was a smaller scale, a more intimate scale, so I wanted to watch that separately uh, and within the comfort of my own home on the smaller screen that I've got at home as opposed to the larger cinema screen. So work through those questions, okay? Work through those questions. So with that done, now write your definition of what you think a documentary is and what traits do you expect a documentary to have. So when I'm thinking about this, I would think about that word documentary and that first bit, to document, to note, to record. So perhaps a documentary is about recording what's really happened, recording truth. And that's a real issue and we'll come to that later. But a documentary maybe is something that records truth and reality. What traits do you expect a documentary to have? Well, we would expect a documentary to have expert testimony. We would expect a documentary to have witnesses, people who were really there. We might expect a documentary to use what's called archive footage, so real footage from a period of time. We might expect a documentary to have reenactments where actors perform in roles. Alternatively, we might think about the natural world documentaries like Planet Earth with a voice of God narrator like David Attenborough over the top, telling us what we're seeing, instructing us as to how to see the evidence that's on screen. So you need to, in your, in your independent learning, note down what you think a documentary is and what traits you expect on, from your experience so far a documentary to have. And as we continue in our study of documentary film, we will think about the Hollywood films that we all know about. Yeah, the classic one that we can reach for is anything from the Marvel Universe versus documentary. But I do want you to take now one Hollywood film from the course. So you might go to Inception. That's a classic Hollywood film, a more modern, more recent film that's on the specification that you're studying. Equally, um, you could go to the Hitchcock that you're studying, or you could go to Apocalypse Now. And I want you to briefly summarise and go through each of those core study areas, the core features of film form, and define the look of that film by commenting quickly on the mise-en-scene, cinematography, editing, sound and performance. If you were in the classroom, imagine that you were all working together writing these, uh, these up for one of the films that you've studied, one of the Hollywood films in particular that you've studied. And then I want you to highlight in those notes which of those features of film form, based on your experience of documentary so far, would appear in documentary. So all those features of film form for your chosen Hollywood film, say from Apocalypse Now, which of those would you expect to appear in a documentary film? And then I want you to narrow that down again, and which of those features are the most problematic? For example, if you were to focus on editing, and to perhaps focus on the shot-reverse shot relationship, in a documentary, because it's supposed to be reliable and truthful, the shot reverse shot editing might suggest a power imbalance that wasn't really there. The editing might choose to leave out certain key information. Those are, those are problematic. Those cause issues. That they, these are things that cause us to ask questions all the time. So I want you to go through that. First of all, select a Hollywood film that you've studied on the course. Note down the general features that you see repeated in that film across the five core study areas listed on the screen. And then note which of those features of film form are shared with documentary before going on to say which of those are the most problematic. And I would suggest editing because editing is about what you keep in and about what you leave out would be an interesting place to start. So with that complete, you're starting to think about what's shared with Hollywood film and documentary and what's different and distinct. 
So now I'm going to introduce you to the features for documentary. And I want you to make sure that you have learned these features. And the final activity that I'm going to quickly talk about is I want you to make cue cards for each of these features. But having this core terminology learned really thoroughly is hugely important for all sections of the specification. And this documentary terminology is also key. So here's the first half. Some of these are familiar to you. They should be familiar to you. You should recognize them from other parts of the course. Some of this language will be new to you as well. So we have some new terms for you. Actuality footage. This is what documentaries are made out of. A moment of unbroken reality captured on film. The classic original documentary, one of the earliest documentaries, was someone filmed sitting on the step outside their house. And it was an unbroken piece of filmmaking. The person just sat there. That is a moment of actuality. Next up is archive footage. So archive footage, I've mentioned this earlier, is footage that was, has been recorded for another purpose, for another production, and, but is being used inside the documentary. Still images, speaks for itself, just photographs. Voiceover narration, so a non-diegetic voice, that's the David Attenborough voice explaining information and positioning the spectator in relation to the filmmaker. You have voiceover exposition, so it's non-diegetic voice that introduces information, typically at the start, and exposition is really telling the story. You have different types of interview, direct interview and indirect interview. Direct interview is where questions are asked and the responder understands the purpose of the question and the intended response, and this is really interesting with stories we tell, we'll explore this more closely. Indirect, indirect interview is where questions are asked and the responder is unaware of the purpose or the intended response. We have types of characters and figures in documentaries. We have archetypal characters and contrasting characters. An archetypal character is someone selected to fill a role, a standard role. So you could have an aggressive male versus a passive female to tell a sexist story or to make a gendered point. You could equally have um, then, as I've just in that example, I've just given contrasting characters, so opposing figures uh, who are there to cause tension. We have three types of editing that you should be familiar with, but they are used very frequently in documentary uh, montage editing, where clips over different periods of time are blended together. Cross cuts, where we see, where we suggest action happening simultaneously, and jump cuts, where we abruptly move forward in time. But equally, we have alongside that what's called frankenbiting. So this is a tool um, to be whereby uh, we have editing of smaller sound bites all put together. So it clips out a little bit of dialogue or it clips out a very short clip and that can change the meaning of something. So there could be a longer description um, and that is clipped out, a tiny part of it's clipped out and then introduced later. Uh, equally, we have uh, what are called confessional monologues. So it could be a figure in a documentary gives a piece directly to camera. Uh, it can sometimes, and it is as though they are giving a confession, and that's in a response to an action or an event. Um, terms like dialogue and duologue you should be familiar with. Conversations between many people, duologue, conversations between only two people. And finally, and this is really important for documentary, whereas an actuality, whereas actuality footage is a moment of unbroken reality, a reconstruction is something that is staged and put back together. So actualities are real footage, reconstructions are staged. Here's our second half of our terminology. Uh, we have very often in documentary film graphics and captions. It's just a way of putting text on screen. We have music. And again, we want to use the terms diegetic and non-diegetic. Music, music and sound design can be complementary to go alongside it or contrapuntal to introduce an opposite sound that doesn't quite match the scene. Uh, we have, as we move through, ambient sound, so just the background sound uh, that is present in the scene being filmed. Uh, and, it, and that ambient sound is always synchronous, so it always matches the timings of the shot. And these types of shot underneath, again, borrow from the features of film form, but they are used very often here, is we have the establishing shot, and that's often really important in documentary because it shows us where we are in time.
time as well as place. The point of view shot, so where we are seeing something as though we're seeing something through a subject's eye in the documentary. And the reaction shot, where we cut away sometimes to see the response um, of a participant in the documentary. And we see this very often with uh, in Louis Theroux's documentaries, we often cut away to get a, and to be shown a reaction. Finally, I just want to briefly introduce you to uh, documentary modes. Um, and these come from a documentary theorist called Bill Nichols, who says there are six types of documentary, six modes of documentary, expository, poetic, observational, participatory, reflexive and performative. So the expository documentary is, as, is where a voice is speaking directly to you, guiding the spectator. That's a classic David Attenborough style of documentary. Participatory, where the filmmaker interacts with the subject and the relationship becomes more complex. Uh, that we see with people like Louis Theroux, you might have come across, and in The Theorist we're going to look at, and that's Broomfield's approach. The poetic mode, which sacrifices continuity in any sense of time or place, that's more like a film like The Act of Killing, and when you're in school you could have a quick look at that on the MacBooks, as we've got a copy of that on there. Reflexive is where the um, artifice of the film and the filmic construction is being directly drawn, uh, having your attention drawn to it. That is certainly the case in stories we tell, but also is the case in the act of killing. And again, I would rev I would encourage you to go and watch that full documentary. The observational mode um, has us look at ha ha positions us as though we are just observing something happening naturally, uh, and this matches up one of the. Th one of the filmmakers who uh, you're going to study as part of this unit, one of the theorists, Kim Longinotto. And finally, performative, which emphasises the filmmaker's engagement with the subject with that direct audience address, this active engagement with the filmmaker. And again, that will fit with one of our theorists nominated for study, Nick Broomfield. So before you move any further forward with your study of this unit, we have a core task now with these features. I want you to create cue cards for each of these features and make sure that you've learned them really thoroughly so that you can use them throughout the rest of your study in this unit. These features are central, we're going to keep coming back to them again and again and you will need to make reference to them again and again. In the next video we will start considering documentary form and some of the thinking that goes around documentary in the background before moving on to the three theorists, Longano. Loganotto, Watkins and Broomfield.